This kit was sent to me by isostation.com as a review sample and this is an ESP32 development board and this is quite an unusual I would probably say kit because it comes with this development board which contains all the the USB logic and some buttons and some LEDs and some probably power regulation and then there is a separate ESP32 board and it is absolutely tiny and that is supposed to go on here which you need to solder. So I think it's going to be an interesting experiment to well first of all see if I can solder something this small well I have my own doubts because I'm not really an expert in soldering and also I don't have professional equipment either so if I can do it most probably you can do it and and of course you have some pin headers which is going to go somewhere like this the reason I wanted this product because uh, well ESP32 is getting cheaper and cheaper there are more and more units and I think I should also get um, the hang of it and start you know using the ESP32 for projects where you know maybe the ESP8266 is going to be too small and you need you know a little bit more power or memory or something so I think it's going to be a good experiment um, you know soldering this together and setting the ID up and and seeing how this works and uh, by the looks of it this uh, development board is designed for this sort of ESP32 chip but if I flip it around there is a different you know type of chip which can be soldered in here and just one more small note on this ESP module as you can see it has a small antenna connector here so it doesn't have any PCB antenna mounted on it or you know printed on it or well, probably you can see the specs here if you pause the video so uh, I think that would be also interesting to see if it has any better coverage than a normal ESP H66 with a, a PCB antenna so again that might be the reason why you choose this module or like you know similar module with an external antenna just to get the extra coverage in places which is you know hard to reach by your normal Wi-Fi router and the Wi-Fi signal the funny thing is that icstation.com doesn't have these type of antennas or at least they didn't have when uh, we arranged this order but I do have an ES, a VMOS uh, D1 Mini Pro uh, which has also external antenna so I'm, I think I'm going to use that antenna probably it's uh, you know the same connector in here and then yeah you can buy these antennas on eBay so that's not really a problem so let's see how it works but first I need to do some soldering as you can see I don't have a fancy equipment I work with a gas powered soldering iron on which I can't really control the temperature much I don't even have any idea how hot the iron is maybe I should invest in a new proper iron the tip could be finer for this job too but this is what I have I just put some flux push the tip against the notch on the ESP board applied a little bit of solder and pull the soldering iron away as the solder flow down it soldered the two boards together. It was fun, but I will probably pick a soldered kit in the future. This is not for the faint-hearted. And not to mention, and if something doesn't work, I wouldn't even know which joint to blame. Before I start programming the device, I thought I'm going to show you how it is, go how is it looking at the moment. So I have the ESP board soldered. I also soldered the pin headers. There is an extra pin which I haven't broken off yet, but um, so the, the provided pin header is one pin longer than the, than the board and I have used this antenna that I got for a VMOS D1 Pro so there is an IPX connector on the ESP and that it goes into this uh, SMA connector and this is just a normal you know rotatable uh, 2.4 gigahertz antenna and hopefully this is a decent enough antenna so with this is all done, the first thing that I did, because I've, I've done uh, quite a few of these steps in a, um, off camera as well, is I connected the, the unit to the micro power, uh, USB power supply. And the first thing that I've noticed is um, the, I could hear the sound from the laptop, so it has definitely recognized this as a new USB device. And I could see that the um, the LED, the second LED, not the power LED, and the second LED was blinking. It was blinking in a slightly different pattern because I've already modified the firmware. So there was a base, uh, there was some default firmware on the ESP which uh, made the LED blink, 
and also did something on the Wi-Fi. I think it created a Wi-Fi access point because that I could see in the debug. I arrived to this ESP32 programming a little bit late but uh, that actually makes our life a little bit easier as well especially when it comes to the Arduino IDE. Previously, I mean previously as in let's say half a year ago, setting up the Arduino IDE to ESP32 was quite complicated but nowadays it is really easy. If you remember there was two things that you needed to do in order to get the ESP8266 set up for the Arduino ID. The first thing was that you had to put the new um, board manager here in the additional board manager URL. So now we have a new URL for the ESP32 so you just put both of the URLs in here. So the top row is for the ESP8266 and the second one is for the uh, ESP32. I'm going to put these URLs into the video description. So that's the first thing and once you have done that you go to the boards, you go to the board manager and wait for this to update and just type ESP32 and you will find an ESP32 by Expressive Systems and currently it's 1.0.0 so this is the, the board manager which allow you to choose many of the ESP32 boards and if I go into the boards I can see that there are quite a few ESP32 boards available already. So the one that I have chosen for this particular module is the generic ESP32 development module. I'm using the flash mode QIO flash stars, uh, 4 megabyte, uh, 32 megabytes, uh, partition default, frequency 80 megahertz, uh, SPS RAM disabled, upload speed is 921600. I've turned debug level to error and for my particular ESP it has configured itself to COM6 and that would allow us to start programming the ESP. First I wanted to start with something really simple and I call this the ESP32 Blinky and it is actually an ESP8266 Blinky because it's well it doesn't do anything else just turns some uh, pins on and off and it turns out that the built-in LED, the status LED on this board is also connected to the GPIO2 just as it usually connected to the GPIO2 of the ESP8266 so I have just literally a copy and pasted an ESP8266 code and I can upload it to the ESP32 I am not exactly sure whether it's happening because of the type of software that I have but what I've noticed that when I get this message that it's trying to connect I need to click on the key button on the ESP otherwise it doesn't start flashing. I looked at other videos where people were using the same board and they were programming the same board and I don't remember that they had to press the, uh, this key while flashing but well I have to do it and it works so I'm not going to complain too much about it. I haven't built anything into this code which is going to communicate over the serial but if I press reset then we can see that we get the usual messages from the ESP which um, is always sent when the ESP32 is getting reset so this is something new which we haven't seen in the ESP8266 honestly this sketch doesn't really do anything the only reason I wanted to write this and then put it onto the ESP because I wanted to make sure that my soldering worked and in general the whole chip and the development board works and it seems that it does I probably should have mentioned in the beginning that this video is not going to be an in-depth review of the ESP32 because then we will be sitting here for a while. But besides the simple blinky sketch, what I wanted to look at is some of the frameworks that I've used already in ESP8266 and one of them is ESP Easy. And it turns out there is an experimental version of the ESP Easy for ESP32, which is called ESP32. And by the way, um, I'm guessing ESP Easy is not the only one because I've seen similar things for Tasmuda being released. As they state here, um, there are a lot of potential in the ESP32, but because of um, constraints in time, they haven't rewritten the complete ESP easy to work with the ESP32 but they rather ported the existing version and of course not everything is working well it's not a final release it's, it's an experimental but um, you know some of the things like the general setup and the MQTT and the rules and also some of the devices already work so you can see here that um, the things that are verified to work and the other things that the guys are working on and of course they haven't used this exact same board that I did 
but hopefully that is going to work. So there are a few different boards that they have tested here. If you want to give it a try, then just scroll down to the bottom of the page because there is a version available for download. So it's the same kind of uh, bin file that you just write to the ESP with the command line utility. So it's quite straightforward. You don't have to install any other tools. I've downloaded and unzipped the archive package, which was here. And as you can see, we have a couple of bin files and a couple of exe files and the usual command one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start a command line. Oops. And I'm just going to start the flash serial.cmd. In my case, my COM port is 6 and the build version is, as you can see here, from is 2100. And now it's doing the thing and I have to press the key button again and it's flashing my ESP. So that was quite easy. So again, you haven't seen this in the video because I haven't, I don't have the camera turned on, but I just uh, pressed the key button as soon as I could see this connecting dot 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 starting. And as you can see, the flashing has started. So 85%, it should be almost done now. Yeah, it's done. And then, and then hard resetting and that's it. Just as we remember from the earlier ESP versions, when you flash a new ESP device with ESP Easy, it will go into the access point mode. It will create a Wi-Fi network, which is called ESP underscore Easy Zero. And the password for this is config ESP or one word or lowercase. So let's try to connect to this ESP32 now. I've connected to ESP Easy Zero Wi-Fi network. And when I type 192.168.4.1 into the browser, I get the ESP Easy Mega access point setup menu. So I need to select my Wi-Fi network and provide my Wi-Fi password. Once I type connect, the ESP32 will try to connect to my Wi-Fi network. And what I would notice on my laptop is that it would lose the ESP Easy Zero Wi-Fi network and it should reconnect to my regular home network. And then we can see that that's going to be my new IP address or the IP address of the ESP. And actually I'm back on my home network now, so I can just click here to proceed to main network. And as you can see, we are in the ESP Easy configuration. So I'm just going to make some changes, set up MQTT and see how it works. So after a little bit of configuration, I have created controllers. I've set up the first controller, which is basically my MQTT server. So I specify the, the host and the port and also the user ID and the password. And if you remember by default, um, ESP Easy is going to send out messages based on the system name slash task name slash variable name or value name. So I've just left that because that's what I've been using in the past as well. Also, don't forget to check this enabled. I don't think we had enabled before, so I didn't enable this and I didn't know why is it not working. To make this work, to set up the, uh, the system name, also you have to come to config and then you set your unit name here. So that's ESP32. So that's going to be the beginning of the topic. We will see it later. Next, I've gone to devices and I've set up my two devices that I usually do. So I want my ESP to always send the Wi-Fi signal strength and the uptime to my MQTT server. For this particular case, I've set it to every 10 seconds. So you pick the device, which is the generic system info, and you have a couple of system information that you can send. I just use these two. So the Wi-Fi is sending the Wi-Fi RSSI and the uptime is sending the uptime. And also here, don't forget to click the enabled, otherwise the messages are not going to be sent. And that's the interval, how many seconds the messages are sent. And in the tools, I've gone to advanced and I've just enabled the NTP. So the ESP also knows about the time and it can uh, refresh the time from the NTP server. And you have to set the UTC offset here in minutes. So that's one hour, 60 minutes for me. That gives you CET. And I've only updated the rules um, at this point. And as you can see, we have a little bit more space to write rules. And also we have four different rule sets. So this ESP32, most probably the more memory really allows to write complicated rules. I'm not sure if anyone is extensively using that. I think it's a really good feature, but I have to admit that I haven't used it extensively either. 
So that's pretty much it. So the devices, the controllers are set up. So let's see how it sends messages. I've created this really simple flow, actually. ESP32 test board, I should say. So I've created this really simple test flow in Node-RED. And as you can see, I have subscribed to ESP32 slash uptime and ESP32 slash Wi-Fi. So that comes from my devices. So Wi-Fi and uptime. And of course, the beginning of it, or the first sort of like node in the, uh, in the topic comes from the device name. And all I'm doing here is, is uh, um, writing the uptime to the node status. So we can see it here. And it also uh, shows the last time it was updated. And as you can see, we are getting messages every 10, 10 seconds. So the uh, ESP is behaving as expected. That will be my review of this ESP32 board. I'm quite happy how this board is performing and especially that ESP Easy is already available in, uh, for ESP32 even though it's an experimental version. I am pretty sure I will be spending some time in the future with ESP32 so I get some knowledge using this chip programming and most probably using its extra capabilities. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you in the next video.